Well, welcome everybody to the HPHA Neutrino Rise of Adder. Um, we're so happy to be here with us today. I am Debbie Cooper. This is Ryan Kale. And we're going to discuss both of our patterns today, the rookie pattern and the level one pattern. Um, just a few quick announcements before we begin. We would like to thank Neutrina, our sponsor. They do sponsor the level one regional championship shows for all of us. So without Neutrina, the show wouldn't be possible. And during the two patterns, we are going to pass the bucket. And the proceeds do go toward our HQHA Special Horseman Crisis Fund. So if all of you would care to make a donation, it would be tremendously appreciated. There are so many times I have been blessed in my life not to have needed to call on the crisis fund, but I've had many friends who've had some tragedies in their lives. So just the money that we raise here today and all the other board shows help them tremendously. So, thank you for your, for your contribution in advance. So, let's talk about our first pattern, our rookie pattern. And we're here today by our, our um, what we want all of you to benefit from today is simply how to ride this pattern. We're not going to get into a clinic about ranch riding or anything like that. We all know about the event now, but we are here to help you and answer any questions that you may have with this pattern. So, Ryan, you jump in whenever you've got something to add. But what I'm going to do with you right now is just, we're going to walk through this. I'm going to talk through this pattern. First and foremost, when you go to the show office, or we don't go to the show office that anymore, often anymore, we, we print them. When you print these patterns, when you're looking at your pattern, make sure, I think first and foremost, first thing everybody does is they look at the picture of the pattern. They look at the pattern, how it's drawn. Well, that's fine, and that is important. However, I personally think, and this is from a judge's standpoint, Ryan and I are both HAJ judges, so we sit in the chair, we watch all of you, all of us, show, particularly important that you pay attention to your legend, not just how the pattern is drawn. So in this particular pattern, we have 13 maneuvers. So when a judge sits down with his scribe in that chair, we have to make sure that we are accountable for all 13 of those maneuvers. So when you go back and look at your score sheet, you have a mirrored image of your run. Yeah? Oftentimes, when you don't look at the legend itself, and you just, oh, I've got to walk, I've got to trot, I've got to walk on the pool, sometimes you leave out a maneuver. And you don't ever want to underestimate. Every single maneuver is judged. We have to judge every maneuver. So I'm just going to, we'll just walk through this. So our first, our first maneuver is a walk. And hopefully they're going to start, I would think they would start from this side. And I would think the level one pattern will probably start from this side. So you're going to be at your end gate, you're going to hang right, and you're going to walk. You're going to walk around the corner and part way down to the center. At that point in time, you will pick up a trot. Trot to the corner, which would be the far end. The far end, you'll pick up your extended trot. You will round the entire end of the arena. Complete the second corner. Right at the corner, pick up your left lead. You're now loping down this rail. I would encourage you not to ride close to this rail. When you make this corner, you need to be thinking ahead of time. When you're at the top of this first corner, your eyes need to be over the second corner. You need to know, you need to have a found spot in the dirt or a spot down here where you look and you know where you're going to turn. I would say 30 feet off that rail, Ryan. I would be at least 30 feet off this rail for multiple reasons. The judges could be on that side. I'm not sure where they, where they will sit. The judges could be on that side. And when you go right down the rail, the judges can't see you. They just see a rider from the waist up flying by you. So that would be one reason. But particularly in this pattern, you have a right hand turn to make. So if you're too close to that rail, you're going to be right on the rail to make a right hand turn. So be smart, stay off that rail. Have in your mind, before you ever start, how far down you want to go. This is showing us, according to this drawing, you're going to come a long ways down this arena. I would say I would probably stop in the vicinity 
of about that blue section that's right across the knee. I'm going to use my whole arena. It's going to give me plenty of room to get that horse lined out, get that horse straight, build a little bit. A lot of these horses were former rainers, former cow horses. They may still be both. They're all probably going to lope down there. If you want a nice, pretty little stop. I'm not suggesting that you need to make a run down like you would in a range of cow horse, but if you know your horse is going to stop and it's got a nice little sliding stop on it, you want to be building as you proceed down that line. The fastest part of your line should be right before you're ready to stop. We're going to stop. Your next maneuver is a turn and a half to the right. Don't get in a rush. For me, I would how to roll back. I hope my horse has just gone and left the skid track. I want to give that horse enough time to stand up, be done stopping, get square, maybe a thousand one, thousand two, complete your turn and a half to the right. This particular time is really important to stop on time. Not overturn, not underturn. Because why? You've got to be in a straight line to start right back out again. So having that timing and knowing where you want to shut your horse off is really, really important. You'll want to play with that a little bit. And, and you all know your horses and your trainers know your horses about when you need to shut them off, earlier or later. But this is one time when you really want to stop right on the money. Okay, our next maneuver is a gallop. Now, it, to me, the way this pattern is drawn, it looks like you do a turn and a half and Boom! Shoot out of a cannon and go gallop. For me, that wouldn't be what I would suggest my riders do, nor would it be what I would want to do. Um, I think you can easily take one or two steps, get your horse loping, get them lined out, and move on into your gallop. Now, it's a high degree of difficulty. If you think you can crank that one and a half turn out, boom, and smack that thing and jump it forward and go and remain in control. Will it be a higher degree of difficulty? Might you get a higher score for it? Absolutely. So if you want to ride offensively and you think you can pull that off, by all means do it. If you want to ride defensively and be a little more correct, make sure you've got that left leg on your horse, make sure you're going to get the correct lead. You're certainly not going to be penalized for that. Get a nice zero, three or four stride, and you've got plenty of room to gallop. So you need to decide for tomorrow morning, how you want to do that maneuver, how you want your departure to be. Are you going to kick right out of there, or are you going to take one or two steps and frame up and go? There's nothing that says either way how you have to do it. If you know your horses and you know how to ride, how you get the most out of your horse. Okay, we're going to gallop all the way down that rail, and it calls for gallop. If you want to get a plus half, it can't be a low. Okay? You need, you need to have at least enough speed, at the very minimum, that when you ask that horse to collect, that you can show that judge that your horse can collect the low. For me personally, ask Ryan how he feels about that, we've got lots of judges here, if that rider doesn't go fast enough to show me that that horse can stuff fast and collect, I, don't, I can't pay the next low. So that next is probably going to be a zero, no matter how good how good a mover that horse is, because he never shows you that he can shut off and step back and, and go slow and have a nice downward transition. So you're, you're so in my estimation when I'm in that chair, you're you are two maneuvers are being affected by not enough speed to make a good downward transition. You've just gotten a minus half on your gallop. Probably only going to get a zero on your boat, no matter how pretty it is. So we need to, we need to ride some forward motion, guys. Yes. Yeah. So 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 Marvin just made a good point. He said, let's let's talk about that boat. Let's talk about what is a gallop. What is an extended boat? Well, it's clearly a lengthening of stride. When you lengthen that stride, of course you're going to get a higher rate of speed, right? You know, we're looking at the Kentucky Derby a couple weeks ago. The horses with the longest stride, they're usually, they're usually the ones that are crossing the finish line first.
That doesn't mean that we're going to sacrifice quality of movement. It doesn't mean that we're going to sacrifice correctness. If you, if you can't complete that maneuver and stay correct, or at least a plus half, and you know you have to back off a little bit, so be it. Ride smart. Ride offensively to score points, defensively to stay out of that penalty box. But you've got to show us enough speed in this pattern to be able to make a downward transition. Okay? So we are now in our downward transition. If it were me, if it were me, even though this pattern shows you going around the corner before you make that downward transition, I'm probably going to start asking for it before I get to the corner. I don't think any horse can go careening around a tight corner and look pretty doing it. Brian, would you be in agreement? Mark, are you good with that? Bud, where's Bud? Did Bud leave us? There you are. What do you, how should they take that corner? Slow down a little bit before or go right around it and be brave? Okay. Absolutely. You know, you can't, are you capable of raising the degree of difficulty? Or do you want to stay safe? And these are all things, you can't make that plan when you get in the pen. You guys have to make that plan tonight. You have to know tonight how you're going to show tomorrow. You can't ride in the pen tomorrow and then make your plan. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So, we have now collected our rope. We're on our right lead. We're loping up around the top. We have to come around, complete a square corner, come across, change lead. Now, for me, when I'm galloping, right when I slow down at that corner, my eyes are going to be over on this wall, and I'm going to be figuring out where I'm going to turn to come across the arena to make my lead change. I can't wait till I get in the vicinity and go, okay, I'll turn now. Because I'm going to start preparing for that turn way before I get there. I'm going to have my horse thinking right. I'm going to have it steering to the right. So you want to know where you want to turn. Probably the most difficult maneuver in my estimation in this pattern is the lead change. And not necessarily the lead change, but you've got to come across the arena. And you need to make a fairly tight turn, stay perfectly straight, change lead, stay perfectly straight, because from a judge's estimation, if you guys let that horse change and then duck off to the left, you have just compromised your maneuver score. Your maneuver evaluation is going to go down. We want to see those horses stay in a nice straight line, shoulders up, come across, change, stay straight. Stick. Yes. Yes. No, you can follow that wall. Her question was, after the gallop on the downward transition, is that a square corner? It's not. Did you get a pass? Okay. It's not. Now, when you come around the wall and come across on your right lead to now head that direction, that needs to be a square corner. I mean, maybe not as a square corner as what a trot would be, but you want to bring those horses' shoulders around and complete that turn. And if you don't bring their shoulders around and complete that turn, you're not going to have a good straight line change lead. It's imperative. Do you think you've turned enough? to turn a little bit more. Okay, lead change, flying or simple? Yes. Okay, question was, on the lead chain, if you have a horse that really ducks off and dies, is it better to make a flying chain or a simple chain? Is that the question? And the simple stay straight because that horse won't dive off. If it were me, I would probably do a simple chain. Do you think the simple chain is prettier? It's just as credit earning. I, I believe Marvin, who, who else, we got this judge out there, Ryan, a, a simple change is just as credit earning as a flying lead change. I say plenty of simple changes if they're good. So don't feel like, oh, I can't do a flying lead change. It is, you know, I got to do a flying lead change. I got. No, I don't think you do. Marvin, what do you think? As long as they're good. As long as they're good. Absolutely. And simple lead changes, if they're 
A good one's not easy. They should be paid if, if they're done properly. So, now we're going to come around the corner, continue loping toward that rail. We need to make it. Now, when I make that lead change, my eyes are now on these poles. I want to know where I'm going to turn, how far down I'm going to go, and I'm going to have a spot picked out in that dirt, or maybe it's the neutrino sign, or maybe it's shorties, I can't tell from this area, but I'm going to know exactly where I need to turn to be in line with my pole. I want that to be a nice square turn and a real pretty straight line. Now, going back to the legend, when I said it was so important to look at the legend on your pattern, don't just look at some patterns, the, walk, the pole and the walk will be judged together. One maneuver score. This particular pattern, and I can tell you from sitting in the judge's chair, in this particular pattern, the walk prior to the pole is a judged walk. Pole and the walk are not one score. So, what I see people do a lot is lope up almost to those poles. Just walk, they just, they just walk maybe a stride or two and walk their poles. There's no way I can give them anything but a minus half on the walk. Do you find that happens a lot, Ryan? You can't mark it. I'm not going to call it eliminating a maneuver or, or an OP and off pattern, but it's, it's, it's a zero. So when you come around that corner, I would encourage all of you to make sure you, give, you, you start to walk enough distance before those poles to give those judges tomorrow a walk to judge and score, and hopefully a plus. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's why it's really important to look at your legend. Make sure you know what every single maneuver is. So our walk after the pole isn't a judge walk, right? We're immediately going to pick up the cross. But it's important that you pay attention to the legend. Don't just look at the pattern, how it's written. Okay, we're going to walk over our pole. We're just going to take a few, a few short walk steps. That walk is not judged, and pick up our trot. Give that judge, there again, you guys, use your arena. Give the judges enough time to make an evaluation, to make a maneuver evaluation. If you just come over those poles and just, just trot a few steps and turn the corner, I can't pay you for it. Maybe if I had seen a few more steps a little bit longer. So make sure, even though some of these patterns are quite chopped up, as best you can, show those judges as much as you can. And the longer you stretch those distances out, the more time you have to make an evaluation. Okay, so then we're going to turn the corner, pick up our extended trot. We're going to finish our pattern with a nice, bold, extended trot, a stop, and a back. And that's all going to take place right about in this area. Okay questions on this pattern. Now, Brian is going to be your demo rider, and I am going to talk, kind of do a talk over while Ryan's doing his thing, and I'll say, you know, at this point, my eyes would be on the neutrino sign, or at this point, I'm going to talk, talk it through like that for you. Any questions before Ryan begins? Are we good? All right, I'm going to get out of his way, figure out where I can go to be out of Ryan's way. Yeah, I'm going to come back in here. Can you guys still hear me if I stand in the aisle here? Everybody still hear me? Good. Yep. Okay, our first maneuver is a walk, and here comes our rider. He's on course. If you notice, Ryan is walking in here with a sense of urgency. He started walking way back in the chute. He didn't wait here and stand flat-footed. He brought this horse in briskly. He's giving the judges enough time to evaluate his walk. That's right about where I would pick mine up, so he's a little bit before that first banner. 
which I think will work real well for you guys tomorrow. You have a nice straight line, he's a little off the rail. In my estimation, he's right where he should be. He's letting this back wall help him around the pattern. It's pretty, it helps guide the horse, steer the horse. It's round, it's pretty. I would do the exact same thing. He just steered to the left a little bit to get himself off the rail. He has a nice straight line. He's making that horse maintain that same speed. And there's his little stop. He gives that horse some time to stand up. And he's off. Executed very, 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 very nicely. Gallops down the rail, he turns the corner, he chooses to slow down after he turns the corner. Selected lope, and you'll notice here, you can use the rail, you can stay on that wall. I think a smart rider is going to stay on that wall and use it. He has to turn, he has to get straight, stay perfectly straight, and stay straight. See, that horse wants to dive in a little bit on him just a little, but he held him out. That's going to be a kind of a deal breaker or maker for some runs tomorrow. And see where he stopped right after he turned that corner? And I, I'm able to give him a plus half walk. I got to see that horse really walk. He didn't lope right up to the pole. Very excellent. Makes a nice turn here. Gonna go all the way across the pen. Show the trot off. There you go. And stop and back. So I think Ryan's pattern placement was as excellent as it could be. But he had a plan. Ryan, did you have a plan that you want to share with these guys? You want to know what your plan was?
Oh, now, Karen is just asking me to remind you all that Neutrina will match dollar for dollar all of the funds that we received tonight. So, once again, we, we thank you for your generosity and we thank Neutrina. Okay. All right, so we switch over to our next pattern. And this is tricky. For you guys that are showing in the rookie and the, the level one of the select, it's hard to get your head wrapped around two patterns back to back. So um, that, that's a lot of work to be done for all of you. But you've had these patterns a long time. You've had a, weeks to study them and weeks to memorize them, so I hope that all of you have taken advantage of that. Can all of you that are way down here, can you see it here well enough? We're good? Okay, we don't want you, we don't want anybody left out. We don't want anybody left out. You go, Andrew. All right, so this is our level one, uh, this is our amateur and our, and our select pattern. I think it should be like pass the hat or something, you know? Pass the bucket. I'm not sure about that kind of thing. Pass the hat sounds way better. We need to have a, some cool hats and pass the hat. Okay, so let's begin. Let's take a look at our legend so we know exactly how these maneuvers are going to be evaluated on the part of your judges. So our first maneuver is a walk. Our next maneuver is a trot. Our next maneuver is an extended lope, right lead. Uh, lope right lead, change lead. Lope left lead, extended trot. Stop, right pass left, side pass right, halfway. Walk over logs, here again. Walk over the logs, that's one maneuver. The walk after the log is a second maneuver. Two different maneuvers. You're going to get a score for both of them. So don't slight yourself on that walk. Trot a square and stop 360, turn left and back. So I am assuming that tomorrow they will use, will swap in gates. It certainly be the, the, the wisest thing to do in my estimation. So we walk in, we hang a left. And there again, you know, give yourself enough room. I don't know if they'll have a start cone um, that you might have to be standing at, but if not, you don't have a start cone, they're going to start you in the end gate. They'll flag you when you come in. I would be over to the to this side of that gate, so I can make, I've already made a nice turn and I'm ready to go in and it will give myself the, the, a longer way to walk. So, I mean, you want to have this thing planned out right, I mean, from the minute you enter the tent. You have plan. I know where I want to stand when I'm in the shoot. I know how I want to start my pattern off. So I mean, it's more than any other dis discipline that we do, I think, you really have to have a well thought out plan for this class. Because the, the maneuvers come up so fast. You just don't have as much time to think about it like you do in the rainy. You can look three circles in the rainy and you have a cup of coffee on them. You know, I mean, you've got a long time to make a plan. you got to lope all the way around the end and all the way down the side. You can think about some, some stuff. This stuff just comes at you, boom, boom, boom. So you really need to have that plan in your head. So we're going to walk in. We're going to hang a left. If our judges are on this wall, I'm not sure which wall they're going to be on yet, but if they are on that wall, you want to give yourself probably a good 30 feet off of it. You're going to begin your trot. It looks like we're going to trot uh, a little less than halfway. So I'm thinking maybe between shorties and the Wrangler sign, kind of in that area. I would have, you know, looked, come over here on this side of the arena, made a plan, look to see where those are. But uh, about there, then you're going to pick up your extended. Low, right lead, 
And you know, you'll notice on this pattern, which they didn't do on the previous pattern, if you look at the way this pattern is drawn, it shows you actually loping, doesn't it? A little way and then galloping. And I think that that is the way it is intended to be on the rookie pattern as well. I mean, sometimes they're drawn differently, but that even shows you this low cup of fries and start to gallop. So we've got a, a great long way to gallop. So if you've got a horse that you can step up and show off and gallop, this pattern is going to let you do that. It's going to let you shine. So if you, if you can do that, strut your stuff. Because you get to gallop all the way down the wall, all the way around the top, and all the way back down here. So there again, know your horse's strength and weakness. And if the gallop is his strength, show it. Take it. Take advantage of that. Mark it. So we're going to come around. Oh, I'm going to say pretty much a bright at center. Your eye, my eye, is going to be, when I come around, when I'm at, when I'm approaching, I'm galloping on my right leg, down the small, and now I'm around the top. When I get about to that gate, I am going to be figuring out where I want to turn, clear down here. My eye is picking the spot in the dirt. I mean, I'll even go as far as the dirt. Not only do I know the banner where I'm going to go to, I've got my eye on the spot in the dirt that I want to make sure that I go through. So way up there, I'm figuring out where I'm going to turn and where I'm going to collect to come across the arena. Okay? So we're going to collect. And there again, this shows you going around the corner and then collecting. Do what you think you can do. If you want to continue galloping around that corner and then you think you can collect, by all means. If you want to ride a little safer, just start slowing down a little bit and take your corner. Those are your two options. And you as a rider just have to know your horse and know your ability. So, same thing applies in this pattern as our last one. When you come across this arena, it needs to be in a perfectly straight line. Keep your eye on, maybe it's going to be the neutrino side, maybe it's going to be the Markel, wherever you cut across. Find something to look at and keep your eye straight. This shows a fairly tight turn, huh? The loop to come back and make, it, make your lead chain fairly tight. I don't think you necessarily need to ride it exactly as it is drawn. If you want to open that up a little bit, like if you've got a horse that you think isn't going to follow its nose and come around that corner real pretty, and you want to just make that loop a little wider, be smart. Know your horse. You know, part of what makes a good rider is knowing how they're going to ride that pattern. So if you can, if you can make it a little tight, fine, but if you open it up, I don't think it's going to be a detriment from a judge's perception at all. You're going to stay nice and straight. There again. Same as that other lead change. You've got to stay straight before the change, during the change, after the change. Head straight, straight for that wall. Come around, we're going to look down the wall, and I will be there again, and Ryan will show you. He'll, he's going to keep his horse. This, this for, the, for the sake of, of drawing, they have to show those two lines apart. You're almost going to be in your exact same track as you were when you did your gallop. You don't have to ride to the inside of that gallop line. That's all you can do. At the corner, we're going to break down to our extended trot. Now, as soon as I break down to that extended trot, my eyes, way up there, are going to be down here, finding a spot in the dirt. Right down in here, right? That plan has, in order to execute this properly, the minute you break down that extended trot, you need to know exactly where you want to go. Do you want to stop out here a little further? Do you want to stop close to the pole? You need to have a plan. Know where you're going to turn. Know if you're going to trot with speed right up to that pole and slide into it. Know if you're going to play it a little bit safe and back off just a little bit. That has to be a plan. Just like with your gallop, you have to know how you want to ride that. Okay, uh, there again, you know, you see 
trainer, man, the truck right up there, side pass 100 miles an hour, side pass that. That's fantastic if you can do it. We all have to ride differently. We all have to know our horse. So for me, I tell my riders when they trot up to that pole, stop, count. Thousand one, thousand two, start the side pass. Make sure you're correct. Take a breath. Let those horses get stood up again. Because if they came trotting up there, and they slid into that, they need to have at least a second. Thousand one, thousand two. It's not very long. It's not like you're standing there for a long time. It's just enough time to get yourself lined up and go. And this is a short pole. It's not a long pole. It's a short pole. You don't have a long way to go. Um, it's hard to get a lot of speed built up when that pole is that short. And it's really great when you see those horses side pass the speed, but if they don't side pass correctly, they're not going to get paid for speed. If those front feet aren't crossing, if those back legs aren't crossing, I'm not going to pay him for doing a fast but incorrect side pass. If it can be correct and done with speed, perfect. The plus one. So know your horse and make a plan. We walk over the pole, we are facing this north wall, and after we go over those poles, it is a judge walk. You're gonna, it's a pretty short distance, right? I mean, it, it's not too far, but so stretch it out as far as you can. You're not going to go clear of the wall, but don't start it, you know, a horse length after the pole. Keep it, keep it going. Make these square corners just as square as you can make them. The more they're a 90 degree angle, the, the higher you're going to get paid from those judges. It's a higher degree of difficulty. That horse that steers and guides and brings its shoulders around and comes around, or it's one that just kind of makes. Sometimes you can't even tell if they're trotting a square, a square or a circle. This is telling you to trot a square. So make these nice squares. And give yourself a distance in between. And the more you move those horses forward, the prettier it's going to look. It's not an extended trot by any means, but in order for this square to look pretty, I promise you, they look prettier when you've got a little more forward motion going, a little faster trot than you would probably just have going down the rail. We stop, we turn left, we back. Pretty straightforward. Okay? Questions on this pattern? Yes, ma'am. If you side pass off a little ways, that's not a problem. But if you side pass off, you do risk having to line up again. It's the higher degree of difficulty. There again, it's like all these others, you know, you know, do you want to just make that turn and a half and keep that horse out, or do you want to take a long step and make sure? Will it raise the degree of difficulty a little bit? Probably. But are you also increasing your odds of smacking the pole again to get relined up? Yes. You know, so they're both doable. They're both doable. Address your pole. I think the biggest mistake that I see people make is they side pass, they side pass, and then they just plow over the pole. Well, you know, after you've made, after you've done that side pass, side pass, side pass, side pass, side pass, side pass pull. you know, make sure those horses know that those poles are there, they see them, and then go over your pole. Otherwise, they still got side pass on their mind and they're going to be zagging when they go through them. You know, get them lined out, help them a little bit. You get them, get them lined out before you go over those poles. Questions? So, if I, her question was, if you have a horse that will sort of do it, I know, but what you're saying is, if that horse will just suck back in one stride, you know, I'll fight to do a big, fast, small, slow. Of course we're going to pay that. Of course we're going to pay it. Might we also pay a horse that gallops, it slows down, and then in two strides it gets slower? That's acceptable too. What is the higher degree of difficulty? Separate that. Now there's some risk involved, right? They fall out of lead more when you do that. Um, you know, you got you got to know them. you got to know your horse. Um, but if you can do it and do it well, by all means. 
that make sense to everybody on that particular maneuver? Yes. No problem. I'll come to you. Oh, you were agreeing. Okay. We're in agreement down here. The yours is probably falling out of lead, right? When you step back and ask, that's why, because it's falling out of lead a hundred times. Yes. Oh, no more questions. Where we've been cut off. I have a logistics question. Okay. That's probably for Karen. We'll, we'll find out. I'll get it. Well, what, but is it only for Karen or is it for all of us? Question being, uh, on the schedule it says there's a tentative break between the Western Riding and the Ranch Riding. The question was, do we know how long a break that is? Is that right? Is that your question? Between the raining and the ranch riding tomorrow. Probably just a just a drag. I bet it's a drag. That'd be my guess. Yeah, I know. I bet it's a drag. And drag back. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, Ryan, you're on. Be a star. <coughs> a nice distance to trot and started his gallop. He's got a long way to gallop. This is a fun pattern. We need to go somewhere. We'll get the giddy up. He came off that rail really pretty. So in my estimation, you know, the size that he made that turn in that loop was excellent. That was tight. I know that looks like it was really easy to do because Ryan made it look easy, but it really isn't so easy. So make a plan and know how you want to execute that plan. Break down his extended truck. He's got a nice straight line, perfectly straight line coming down through here. His eyes are on his pole, he knows right where he's going to go. It's a short pole, it comes up fast. See how he checked his horse and he made his horse look at those poles? That's what I was referring to before. He announced those poles. He came out a nice long way. Judges, those judges will definitely have plenty of time to evaluate his walk. His square is very symmetrical. Look at his tracks in the dirt. That's important. We didn't discuss that, but it's really important. Each side needs to match up. And he's got an excellent turn there, an excellent back. How about it for our demo rider? Come on, Ryan. You have to remember those two patterns back to back. Back to back. Good job, Ryan. Anything that I didn't cover in that pattern you think you should have? Okay. All right. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so everybody, go out and have a really good dinner, have some fun, enjoy yourself, go jump in the pool. You're all winners, you're here, you wouldn't be winners. So have fun tomorrow, good luck, and ride those horses just like you ride them at home. Just another name for a different horse though. They're all the same. Night, everybody. Thank you, Ryan.
बनाया